Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today you're not gonna get to see my face in this video because I'm gonna do kind of I guess part three of my bookshelf tour. At the end of 2020 I shared both my non-fiction shelves as well as my antique books that I have on my bookshelf which are just parts of my book collection that I usually don't share in my general book shelf tours and so on. And so I thought since probably around March or April I'm gonna do my 2021 bookshelf tour, I thought before that I'd share for once, for the first time ever, my manga and graphic novel collection. So that's what you're gonna see today. And yeah, let's first look at the shelves, I guess, as a whole, a little overview. So first I have my manga collection here, which is obviously on the same shelf as a big part of my antique books collection, also as part of my K-pop collection, but when we get down here we have all my mangas and then also my witch comics down here. And these mangas are double stacked, so I have my favorite mangas in front and then some mangas that I just didn't want to get rid of but that I also don't intend on ever rereading in the very back. And also something I'm actually gonna do in this bookshelf tour is I'm not gonna show you every single manga or not even every single manga series but I'm just gonna show you my favorites because I read most of my mangas in German and I am way too lazy, first of all, to look up the English or Japanese titles of all these mangas. And also I do not feel like taking all of my mangas off of my bookshelves and then, you know, putting them back in because that's a lot of work. And so I'm just gonna share with you my favorites and maybe tell you a little bit more about them, which I usually don't do in bookshelf tours. But anyway, here is my manga collection. These upper two shelves are all of my very all-time favorite mangas. The reason for that is that if I have the doors closed on my bookshelf, these are the two shelves that you can still see. And then down here, obviously, I also have mangas that aren't quite my favorites, but that I still very much enjoyed. Also, my mangas are, like, sorted by title and alphabetically so yeah that's kind of the way I go about that and then down here as I said are my witch comics and over there is my bed <laughs> then moving on up here on my shelf which you're also gonna get to see are my mostly bon destiny which are French graphic novels as well as some other comics and graphic novels which I'm also gonna show you, although most of these are just two series really, so yeah. But now let's take a closer look. So over here we have the first shelves and actually this very first manga right here isn't really a manga technically, it's a manhwa, so a Korean version of a manga, which also means you don't read it I don't want to say from back to front because reading it Japanese is just like, you know, from a Eurocentric perspective, you don't read it back to front, but you read it normally, I guess. But yeah, this first manga right here is Angel Diary by Lee Yun hee as well as Kara. Lee Yun hee was the one who wrote it and Kara was the one who illustrated it. And this is one of my favorite manhwas, mangas of all time. I actually only recently reread it. And fun fact, there's a kind of canon transgender character in it. I mean, not transgender as we would understand it, but they grew up as a boy and then transitioned to being a girl, which I found really neat. But yeah, it's about this heaven princess who flees to earth because she doesn't want to marry the underworld king, the hell king, and it's just a really, really fun story and I really love the illustrations in this one as well. The next one over here I have Aoharu Ride, which was also turned into an anime and it's by Iyo Sakisaka, who is one of my favorite manga artists because I just, wait, I turned it around the wrong way. I just really love their art 
And yeah, it's a pretty stereotypical kind of shoujo manga, but you're gonna see a lot of that on my shelves because it was what I mostly read. Also of this one, I believe there are more than the seven volumes I have right here, but I believe I finished this digitally. Then next over here I have Doubt, which is one of the few kind of horror thriller mangas I owned. The storyline is kind of like the game Werewolf or Mafia, if you know that. So a bunch of teenagers are caught and they're kidnapped and wake up in like an abandoned building and one of them is a murderer and they have to find out who it is. So yeah, really enjoyed this one. I actually used to own four volumes but I think I loaned two of them out and never got them back. Then next over here we have an oldie and a goodie that I do own all 23 volumes of and that is Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya and this, for those of you who don't know, follows a girl who's an orphan and she gets taken in by this family but all the people in the family, not all the people, but quite a few people of the family are under this curse where if they are hugged by someone from the opposite sex then they turn into one of the 12 Chinese zodiacs. So the main two guys are the cat and the rat, which the cat obviously isn't part of the zodiac, but that's a whole deal within the story that I won't get into. So yeah, if you're looking for somewhere to start with manga, with shoujo manga, I can highly, highly recommend Fruits Basket because it's just very heartwarming and also was a lot of fun. Then over here, these six mangas are kind of the same type of manga. They have the same concept a little bit. And that is that they are retellings of Grimm's fairy tales, although these over here are direct retellings of the fairy tales and this is just a world where, you know, the characters from Grimm's fairy tales kind of come alive. And they are written by two different artists, although the style is very similar. These are by Kei Ishiyama and these are by Ayomi Kanu. And I absolutely love the style of these mangas. I think they are illustrated so beautifully. They have some of my favorite art style of all time. It's just, it's just really, really pretty. I love it. Also, they all kind of play with gender band Grimm's characters. For example, here you have Snow White, who actually is a dude. Next we have Moe Kare by O Ikeyamada, who used to be one of my favorite manga artists, but I don't believe they would be now because there were some things that, you know, as you grow older, they seem kind of rapey, like forced kisses and so on. But, you know, a lot of shoujo manga used to have that. But yeah, I still really enjoyed it when I read it. So it's still up here because I don't have space down there and sometimes you just gotta chuggle stuff around. Now we can move on to the next row. We have the rest of my Moekara collection here. We have only the first volume of Oran High School Host Club, which is one of my favorite mangas of all time, but I read almost the entirety of it in digital form. I do want to get the physical mangas, but you know, <laughs> it's over 100 euros to buy the entirety of the collection and I just don't have the money for that right now to just buy something that I already read just to have it as a collection piece, I guess. Next I have Special A by Maki Minami. I also only have the first two volumes of this one, even though I have read the entirety of it. This was one of the first animes I ever watched and then also one of the first mangas I ever read. I have read the entirety of this also digitally, obviously. And yeah, I really enjoy it as well. It's a very unique art style as far as my collection goes, to be honest. And yeah, it's just this really fun rival childhood friends to lovers story, which, you know, is just a classic, but it's a classic for a reason. Then these beautifully colorful mangas over here are probably my favorite manga series of all time. It's Switch Girl by Natsumi Aida. And this series is just, I don't have the first three right here right now because Hannah has them in her room. Once again, this has a really unique art style as a whole, but also 
This story follows a girl who, for her schoolmates, is like this really ideal girl. She can do makeup, she's pretty, she's feminine, whatever, all the stereotypes, but actually she's quite disgusting. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know how to explain it. And she's a switch girl, because at home she's so completely different from at school which she is, so she doesn't get bullied at school because she used to be bullied at school and then one of her new classmates finds out her secret identity. And she finds out his secret identity because he's a hunk, but he doesn't want the attention from all the girls, so he disguises himself as being like kind of boring and really ugly at school. And yeah, it's just hilarious, a lot of shenanigans can highly highly recommend this series. Here the last series on my favorite favorite shelf is Vampire Gain by Judal. This was the first manga series I ever owned in physical form. Because of that it's obviously very important to me. And this, as the name suggests, is a vampire series. It's also one of my favorite series of all time. Obviously not just because of nostalgia but also because of the contents and basically we follow a girl who is the descendant of this king who defeated this big vampire king and the vampire king swore to be reincarnated at the same time as the human king is gonna be reincarnated and he's gonna get his vengeance and the daughter who's you know the descendant of this human king then decides to help the vampire king kill her grandfather, great-grandfather, like the reincarnation of his great-grandfather. It's great, it's fun, a lot of great characters, I love it. And then over here we just have a few standalones and story collections, which are here not because I love them so much, but mostly just because they wouldn't fit on my other shelves, and that's why. Then, continuing on to my not-quite-favorite shelves, a lot of these I actually can't remember. And there's one that's on here the wrong way around. Uh, a lot of these I can't remember what exactly they were about, gotta be honest. I read them when I was 12 to 16, so almost more than 10 years ago in the case of some of these. And I just remember enjoying them more than the others that are in the back, so that's why they're here. First, I have one that I actually read recently, as in like three years ago, four years ago, and that is 31 Dream right here, which is about a girl who, not a girl, a 31 year old woman who through something, I don't remember what, gets turned back into a 16 or 17 year old high school girl and who becomes an idol. Then we have After School Nightmare, which was one of the first mangas I ever read as well. And I don't remember that much of the storyline, but I do remember that the main character was intersex. So yeah, that's quite interesting. I don't remember if the representation was any good, but just a note if you're interested in that. Next, we have Anonymous Noise, which I don't remember what it's about. I think it was also some idol type story. Then we have this one right here, which I'm too lazy to look up the Japanese or English title, but you're gonna see quite a few series by this author, which all have German titles. And this author is Kozue Chiba, who was one of my favorite shoujo authors. I really, wrong way around, I really enjoyed her art, and so I read almost anything that was out in German until I kind of stopped reading mangas. Next we have Blood Plus as well as the spin-offs. These are very close to my heart, although not as close as the anime series, although the story is actually quite different from the anime series, like the manga and the anime are quite different. But the anime was, I think, the second or third anime I ever watched and I really enjoyed it, so yeah can highly recommend the anime, even if, you know, the designs and the, not CGI, but, you know, the effects might be a little bit dated. Then here we have Bloody Mary, which is one of the few manga series that I haven't finished that I still intend on finishing, but for that I'd have to go out to the comic store and get them, which, you know, 
I currently don't intend on doing. Then we have Devil of the Victory, which I also don't remember what this is about, but I remember really loving the art style, which is why it's here. Then we have Ski des Suzukikyon by the same author as Moe Kade. I only have from volume 10 to volume 16, because before and after I read it digitally and online. Some more Kozu Echiba, as I said, I read quite a few of her novels. Some of them I read online, but a few of them I also have physically, obviously. Continuing on, we have Love Love Mangaka by Yu Yabuchi. This, I don't remember what it's about. I think it's about a girl who wants to become a manga artist, obviously. Some more Kozu Echiba, some more Iyosaki Saka, who is the same author as Ao Haru Ride. And I only own the first volume of this one because I read the rest online. As far as very classical, traditional shoujo manga go, these two, Kozo Chiba and Iyosaki Saka, are probably my favorite authors. And those are the two authors where if I find new stuff, if I feel like reading manga, I will still pick up their stories. Then I have Kurenai, which is not a shoujo manga, surprisingly but it's more of a supernatural horror style manga, although I don't remember that much of what it was about. Next over here we have Peace, which is more of a psychological romance manga. And I think this was about a young woman who finds out that one of her ex-classmates from high school had committed suicide. And so she tries to find out like, what was up with that? I believe that was it. I'm not 100% sure. Here we have Requiem for the Rose King, which is a retelling of one of Shakespeare's plays, but I don't remember which one. I think it might have been, like, a Henry retelling, but anyway, it's really gorgeously illustrated. Next I have Romantic O'Clock, don't remember what this was about. Then we have Shinobi Life, which was about a shinobi a ninja, like, coming to the future or to the current time from the past. And then love story stuff ensues. Then Stardust Wink by Nana Haruta is also a pretty traditional, like, shoujo manga. So, yeah, if you're into that, I can recommend. It's about two childhood friends, three childhood friends, but one girl and two guys. So very traditional, like, love triangle stuff going on, and I never finished this one. <laughs> and then lastly, over here, we have Wonderful Wonder World, as well as all of the spin-offs for the different characters here. I believe this is based on a computer game, actually, or an Otome game, one or the other. I don't know, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy the art style of some of them, but then I didn't really enjoy the art style of others. So, yeah. But anyway, can still recommend. Especially, like, down here you have different stories where Alice, the main character, obviously, has love stories with every single one of the characters, I think, which, you know, just weird because it's set in the same world but i think they're kind of parallel universes so yeah anyway and then lastly down here we obviously have my witch collection i own pretty much all of the issues because i did collect the comics for how many years i started in june of 2004 and the last issue came out in June of 2012. So I collected the comics for eight years. My grandmother was the one who always bought them for me and I'm actually only missing, I think, two issues. Both of them corresponding with times that she was in hospital. So yeah, still need to get those at some point. And then when they came out with the bind-ups, I obviously bought them up to the issue that I already owned in the normal comic format. Although I am thinking of maybe buying the entirety of the collection in these bind-ups because, you know, they're just easier to read like that compared to like this. So yeah, 
Also this one right here if you're wondering there's some special editions and special comics that they had every now and again. So yeah, I don't own all of those but I own enough to make me happy. So now for my last graphic novels. Here I have my Bond Destiny collection, although not all of them are in French. These over here are and these right here are. I do have a few of them in French because I used to travel to France quite a lot with my dad. By the way, if it's shaky, I'm very sorry, but I'm kind of just holding on to my tripod because, you know, it's too high up for the tripod. Anyway, I used to travel to France quite a lot with my dad and I used to always buy some of these just to, you know, get better in French because graphic novels are easier for that to do compared to full-on books with only text because you can get quite a lot from the story from the pictures alone. However, Bond Destiny are so unnecessarily expensive, like they can be up to 30 euros per thing, per volume. But anyway, these white ones over here up until the red ones right here are Asterix, which is this series where I think both of them, both the illustrator and the text guy have already died. But it's the series that's still going on nevertheless, following Asterix and Obelix, who live in a little Gallic village uh, that is the last bastion against Romans conquering? Is that, does that make sense? Anyway, and the reason for that is that they have a ma magic potion that makes them really strong, so all the Romans fear them. And it's hilarious, I love them, and I can highly recommend them. By the way, maybe saying Bon Destiny are French graphic novels isn't 100% correct, because quite a few of the most famous ones, for example, Tintin as well, Asterix, I believe as well, are like written by Belgian artists. And I believe this next one as well, which is Lucky Luke, which follows a cowboy who draws his pistol or revolver faster than his shadow. I'm pretty sure reading it now, it's rife with harmful stereotypes, but as a child, I did really enjoy them. As you can see, I have quite a few of those, all of these are all Lucky Luke. Not all of them were ones that I bought myself. A lot of them are from collections that my dad already had or my mom already had. Also the reason why I have so many of these as well as these is that they used to have them at all the gas stations in Austria. So whenever we drove somewhere for a little bit longer, I would get one of those at the gas station. Then over here I have the rest of my Bond Destiny graphic novels. First I have Elf, which I don't remember what this was about. Next I have the Excalibur Chronique, which translated Excalibur Chronicles, so this is an Arthurian retelling. Then I have Histoire de Bretagne. This is a collection of legends from Bretagne in France but illustrated as a graphic novel, obviously, although this is the second volume, so there are multiple volumes of that. Then I have Lancelot, which Lancelot, also an Arthurian retelling. I have Entre Chien et Lou. Can't remember what this was about either. Then I, for some reason, didn't notice that this was in the Bond Destiny. <laughs> And I don't know, maybe you can tell that over here it says Robert Jordan, that down here there's the quite famous Wheel of Time sign, but this is La Route du Temps, Nouveau Printemps. So the Wheel of Time, New Spring. Uh, so yeah, this is the French version, the French translation of the graphic novel of the New Spring, of the Wheel of Time, which I had forgotten I had that and then when I started reading the Wheel of Time, like I think four years now? I don't remember exactly. Um, I somehow realized that I had technically already read New Spring once, but I didn't understand anything anyway because my French was that bad, so it didn't matter. Then I have right here one issue or one volume of Black Widow, the finely woven thread. Never continued on with that. I have volume one of The Sandman, which I got recently from a subscriber. 
And over here, the last two graphic novels right here are the first two volumes of Monstrous, which I still need to continue on with that series. But as I said, graphic novels are expensive. So yeah, that was it for this video. If you enjoyed it, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. Tell me in the comments down below if you're interested in finding out anything more about any of the graphic novels I just showed you. All the links to my social media are in the description box down below, so go and check those out. All the links to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman per month, are also in the description box down below, so go and check those out as well. And I hope I'll see you soon. Bye.